Thank you. Uh, the heavyweight division is the big boys, and, and a lot of people like to say that heavyweights control uh, the popularity of the sport. But in the sport of boxing, especially over the last 60, 65 years, what has come to, to be recognized as uh, 1B after 1A being the heavyweights is the middleweight division. The average Joe can uh, recognize that uh, when you see a fighter that weighs 160 pounds, 5'9 to 6 feet tall, they, they think, hey, that could be me. You know, that's, that's just a regular guy. But they have the, the power of a big boy, they've got the speed and, and the, uh, the ability of the smaller fighters. You know, and from Sugar Ray Robinson uh, and uh, Sugar Ray Leonard being recognized as the, as the classy, good-looking guys, we've got the, the maulers and brawlers like Hagler and Vasilio and Gene Fulmer. And it's just always been a classic weight division that the average fan can relate to. And uh, I think that's what makes it uh, today's true glamour uh, division. And we're going to have two of the best in the ring on November 2nd at Madison Square Garden uh, in a great fight. Madison Square Garden, of course, always historically recognized as the mecca of boxing. Done his best to, to bring uh, Gennady Golovkin uh, into the, uh, the, the light of day in the middleweight division and uh, surely can be recognized as being very responsible for uh, his, uh, his fan base that's growing at, at these times. And that's uh, his promoter, the uh, managing director of K2 uh, Promotions, Mr. Tom Loeffler. Thank you, Michael. We're excited to be back here in New York. Um, you couldn't really find a better setting than here at the Refinery Hotel, so we want to thank them and their staff for everything. Not so many press conferences with uh, sunlights and a uh, view of the Empire State Building in the background, so we're excited to be here. We're especially excited to be uh, going back to Madison Square Garden. We did make a commitment, as Bill said, we made a commitment that Gennady wants to fight here in New York, the mecca of boxing. Um, the media capital of the world, and, and that's what we're doing. He's going to come back here and fight the second time this year. Madison Square Garden, the first uh, fight that will happen at the Garden since the transformation will be complete. Um, Curtis Stevens, we want to give him a lot of credit. Uh, Curtis was actually one of the few fighters that called out tonight. And uh, most people shy away from him, and we've got a lot of problems making fights. For Gennady, but Curtis actually called him out before his last fight, before his impressive KO over on Saul Grant. And um, it was never a matter of you know putting this fight together. It was never a matter of neither fighter wanting to fight each other. It was just a matter of making all the details work. And so I want to give uh, Peter Nelson, everyone at HBO, Mark Taffet, um, a lot of credit. Without their help, this fight wouldn't have gotten done, so they realize the significance of this fight, especially here in the New York area. Um, Curtis is coming in with a lot of momentum, and, and they were instrumental in making this fight, this fight happen. Kanani is really the breakout star of 2013. Actually, told when I brought him in your office, I said he was already a great fighter. It just was a matter of proving it to everyone. He hadn't had the exposure over here, but since we got involved with him, that was one of our commitments to him because he wanted to fight here in the States. Um, I think you'll see a lot of fireworks. Uh, both guys are, are great punchers. You know, Andre and, and, uh, and Abel can talk more about the game plans, but I don't think there's going to be one full moment of this fight or one the fight. Um, I want to thank Kathy Duva a lot for her help in making this fight together, uh, making this fight, because like I said, it's been difficult um, getting opponents in the ring with Kennedy. I want to be clear, there's been some people who criticized his record or his opponents, and one thing, and, and Peter from HBO will attest to this, that every fight that Kennedy's fought over here in the States has been the best available fighter that's willing to fight at that particular time. It's curious to me how fighters in the middle ways or whatever division they're in are suddenly unavailable or uninterested when, when the fight comes up. So um, we have to give Kathy and Andre and Curtis a lot of credit for taking the fight. Um, 
there is a great undercard plan. Uh, if you're going to do a show at Madison Square Garden, you can't just have a great main event and, and nothing else. We have, as a cool feature on, on HBO, we have two young undefeated heavyweights. Uh, Mike Perez, who uh, is originally from Cuba, he's 19 and 0. He's going to fight Mohamed Abu Salai. Two undefeated heavyweights. The Garden is really known best known for heavyweight boxing. So when you have two guys like that willing to, to put their records on the line, um, that's a tremendous fight. We also have, on the international broadcast, we have Ola Afalabi, who's one of the top cruiserweights in the world. He's gonna fight Lukas Janik from Poland. So I thought he would like that. <laughs> so we wanna, you know, uh, uh, Ola is from the UK, and we expect him to bring a big fan base with him, and also Lukas Janik from Poland. So, those are the three of the top fights that we have stated, but there'll be a full program. There'll be a total of six fights on the show, and we'll announce those uh, as they're finalized coming up. Tickets are very reasonably priced. As Joel alluded to, it's the strongest selling, or actually the best selling pre-sale, 24 hour pre-sale for any boxing event that's been staged at the theater at the Garden. So I want to also acknowledge Sal from MSG. He's actually the first person that I had called at the Garden when, uh, when we signed it up, and he was, he knew who Gennady was, and he's been very supportive of making this happen. So this is really a dream come true. For Gennady's fourth fight on HBO, his second fight at the Garden, and we're looking forward to making it. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. And a lot of people don't realize this, that uh, Curtis Stevens has never been defeated as a middleweight fighter. Uh, his, his three defeats were all at uh, super middleweight. So technically speaking, we've got two undefeated middleweights, and two undefeated heavyweights to make a great night box actually. One of those points that I'd like to make. And, and behind a record like that where uh, you know, Curtis is undefeated as a middleweight and challenging for the, uh, for the title, uh, behind every, every great fighter, you've always got uh, uh, great trainers and, and great training camps that, that get them in shape. And uh, at this time, uh, I'd like to uh, introduce the, uh, the two trainers. First of all, uh, Curtis's trainer, who, uh, by the way, I want to talk to you later. I've got a, a trademark that I, I'd like to help with marketing, and I understand you've got that thing Havoc going, so we can, we'll have to organize that. But uh, he, he's taking Curtis to uh, this No Way Challenge uh, for the world title, and uh, he's the creator of uh, the Havoc brand, and he's also uh, the creator of a uh, fine No Way contender. And Curtis Stevens here is uh, his head trainer, Andre Rozier. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming out. Uh, to get right to the point, Curtis has been boxing since he was five years old. I started taking him to the gym with my other nephews because my sisters were working and they didn't want to pay for babysitters. So they <laughs> took my time and, and utilized it <laughs> to the best of their abilities. And from early on, from his first fight at the age of eight, uh, when I saw him digging shots on his uh, little opponent, I said, Curtis has a knack for, for punishing his opponents. And this became apparent from his Silver Glove Championships all the way to the U.S. Championships. And I say this because this wasn't something that just happened. We on, we groom, we created, we made sure that he was becoming a world-class athlete. And he took that into the professional ranks where he was highly talented, and he had some pitfalls, but he has grown, he's matured, and I, I don't happen to think that he's green. Some people do think so, but I think that he is a solid middleweight. He's exciting. He is the biggest punching middleweight in the division. And I'm looking forward to this match. I watched Gennady. I'm a big fan of his. He comes to fight. Seems like a great young man. But on November 2nd, we have to meet each other and we have to get it on. 
And like what we say in Brooklyn, when it's time to rumble, it's time to go. So come on out November 2nd. We will be ready. And Curtis will be the new middleweight champion of the world. Thank you very much. I personally go back to 1987. First time we met was in uh, Bordeaux. And you were training Lupi Aquino to uh, challenge for the, uh, against Dwayne Thomas for the junior middleweight title. And he won it that night. And he ate his way out of the uh, But that's another story. I just can't do that But uh, Abel and I go back uh, uh, quite a ways. And uh, let me introduce to you at this time that the head trainer for Triple G, Mr. Abel Sanchez. Thank you, uh, I'd like to thank uh, MSG and HBO for providing this platform for Gennady to once again shine. Uh, I'm not underestimating Curtis. I know that uh, he's had some very good wins of, of late. But I think we're looking at uh, the next, the Gennady Luck and the next uh, superstar in boxing. Um, I don't think that uh, it last more than five rounds. Either way, Curtis comes out to fight. It's going to be a short, shorter round. If he doesn't, well, then it may be a bit longer. But um, I truly believe that you're looking at the next superstar boxing, so don't miss it. So this time I want to introduce somebody that, uh, again, uh, my personal history, we go back. Actually, it's uh, almost 30 years now, Kevin. No, don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, we go back a long way. She's one of my favorite people in the sport of boxing, uh, along with her organization, uh, Main Events. Uh, she is the CEO of Main Events, Kathy Duva. Thank you, Mark. One of my favorite people, too. Um, and I want to uh, start out by just uh, reiterating what everyone's heard. The Madison Square Garden is the greatest place to be. Joel, Adam, it's wonderful to work with It's wonderful to work with you guys again, and we're uh, looking forward to uh, to be able to sit back and enjoy the fight and enjoy the surroundings as always. Don't get sick. Don't get sick. <laughs> I want to work so hard this time. Um, and, uh, and of course, um, the only place we want to be is on HBO. So uh, it's wonderful to be to be there, to, to truly have arrived. It's been a long time and I feel like the main events are starting to uh, get back to the, the, the glory days when we used to be on HBO all the time. I hope it continues and I want to thank Everybody in HBO, particularly Peter Nelson for his patience and his efforts in getting this done. Uh, it was worth, I think it's been good fun, it was worth the effort. And I also, uh, of course, want to thank Tom and all the people at K2. We worked together before, we've been on some pretty spectacular reverence before, I think we're going to do it again. Um, talking about Curtis, and, and by the way, I presumed to ask to introduce Curtis, and you might wonder why I would presume to do that when the greatest announcer in the world is standing to my right. This is way better at it. But there is a purpose, and I hope you'll be able to me. Uh, Curtis has come so far. He's changed so much. And, and I think we can all see that he's finally living up to the potential that everyone saw in him when he was an amateur and starting out his pro career. Sometimes, sometimes it, it, uh, someone has to just find the right team, the right surroundings, the right circumstances, and, and, you, and you take that, that, that true diamond in the rock and turn it into a beautiful sparkling gem. And I think that's what's happened here with this team, and I give all credit to Andre Lanzier. And to Jolene jo jo Mazzone, who is his surrogate mother, without whom I don't think Curtis would be possible. <laughs> Apologies to Curtis' his own mother, who's a lot of life. I am delighted to see that you thought of her today with a beautiful vocation. Totally deserves it. Um, and that's wonderful that you know it. Um, you know, he, he and, and, and Gennady took very different paths to end up in the same ring on November 2nd. And uh, both both involving strong teams, and, and that's a testament to the, the, uh, the team that he has as well with K2 and Abel Sanchez, who supports the fine trainer. But I gotta tell you, leading up to this event, and, and, and thank you for complimenting us for making it, but frankly, it's the fight we wanted too. We just wanted one run. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, but to you know, read the websites, um, although Curtis made the speed list, uh, one would have to believe that Benetti the Love Kid is faster than a speeding bullet. No doubt he is more powerful than a And I'm willing to bet if he tried to get leave a tall building with a single bound. So it kind of sounds to me like, he's, like Curtis is fighting Superman. And that's, that's something that would give anyone pause. Except that, um, 
that, that, as everyone knows, Superman does have a weakness, and it's up to Curtis to find it, and that's going to be his, his, uh, his mission on the work step, step is to find Anatty's weakness. Which leads me to my next topic. One area, um, while Curtis has, has begun to stand out in almost every way, there is one area in which uh, he continues to struggle, and, and I think we don't know what it is. Uh, it's his nicknames. Um, he started out years ago as Boston Ball. Uh, then we moved on to the nickname that shall not be spoken in this promotion. <laughs> And this leaves me with a problem because I'm, I'm here trying to promote my fighter, trying to, trying, uh, trying to promote this event. And you know, if you need that catchy nickname, I think it's really important for a fighter to have to set him apart. And, uh, so we've thought about this a lot, and I gotta tell you, there's absolutely no truth to the rumor that he has decided to change his name to Boss HBO. Uh, but everything is on the table, and it could be arranged. Uh, we can talk about that later. Um, I tried to figure out, um, you know, we kept trying to figure out what to do about this, and then it finally hit me. Uh, Superman does have a weakness, and everybody knows what it is. And I know that Curtis has kryptonite in both of his hands. And so for now, um, at least for this promotion, until he officially becomes boss of HBO, uh, I did my extreme pleasure to present the next middleweight champion of the world, Curtis Kryptonite Steve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, how you doing, everyone today? Um, I can say, uh, first of all, uh, old Lord be God. Um, I thank uh, Peter for uh, bringing me to the uh, HBO uh, fight to uh, K2 promoted. Uh, my lovely uh, lady sits to my right, Kathy, for doing this. Um, I like to thank my old Andre and Gary Stark too for uh, getting to this point that uh, we're here today. You know, um, had a long road and uh, path. Some of it was good, some of it was bad. Um, but I'm here now before you like a new change man uh, ready to take over the middleweight division. Um, Janari is an excellent champion. Uh, I take nothing away from him. Like, he has power, I believe. And uh, he's been uh, doing what he had to do to the, uh, his opponents and uh, taking them out. But I believe uh, come November 2nd, he's going to see something that he's never seen before in front of his eyes. Like, you know, I have tremendous power. And I'm coming to a fight. Um, I'm not scared. And I'm going to be the uh, new WBA world champ coming up in the second. And um, I just like to tell him uh, it's going to be game time. I'm coming to the middle of the ring. He said uh, he hopes I meet him there. I'm going to yell at five. I just hope he meets me uh, in the middle of the uh, trademark when uh, the little Mike be standing there sometime. So I'll let you know, November the second is game time. And the same time, no playing time. Thank you. You've met the challenger, now let's meet the champion. Uh, he's a, a genuine hero in his home country of uh, Kazakhstan, having captured Olympic gold. And, uh, and also, as an amateur, he was uh, one of the, the supreme fighters in the history of, of amateur boxing, an unbelievable record. And uh, since turning professional, always fought uh, at 160 pounds in the middleweight division. He, uh, his uh, record, like Curtis says, uh, 16 of his 18 KOs are in three rounds or less. Uh, Gennady, 16 of his 24 KOs are in four rounds or less. Like I mentioned uh, about Madison Square Garden, he's definitely uh, an, an usher and, and security you know, It is a nightmare because there will be no overtime. Uh, people are going to have to get into their seats and they're going to have to stay there. And uh, it's the type of fight that we anticipate shouldn't go the distance. Anything can happen, but there's going to be a lot of fireworks. So at this time, let me introduce to you the reigning and defending champion. His knockout ratio is the highest in the history of middleweight world champions at 89%. 27-0, 24 knockouts, the reigning and defending WBA middleweight champion of the world, Gennady Triple G Golovkin. Good afternoon, everybody. I have to be here in New York City. I remember a long additional week history for Boss in New York City. It's a special for HBO team. Thank you very much, Sam. Thank you very much for Madison Square Garden family. Thank you. 
Je vais faire ça. I'm happy, this is my dream. No. Great part. Like, you remember history, Sugar Robinson, Sugar Leonard, Mike Tyson, of course. You know, I think same, same chance. Same chance for us, you know, for everybody, for TV, for friends, for us. This is very important for everybody. No. Thank you. November 2nd, second, maybe some special work to this guys. Thank you. All right, these RCAs are the best. So let me just uh, wrap this up. Next will be uh, photo ops with the two fighters. They're going to come around to the front here for, uh, for the press. So I just remind everybody that on November 2nd, live from Madison Square Garden, live on HBO, it's the WBA Middleweight Championship of the World. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! Please, Will. Yeah. Okay. Give me a second. Good night. Right here, guys. Just reach the fist up. There you go. Perfect. Right here. Turn. Everybody good? No, hold on one second. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. One more, one more. Yeah. Did they turn around? Okay. No, hold on. A little bit, take a half a step close to each other. A little bit closer. There That's you go. Thank Perfect. you. Yeah. Okay.